Hello viewers, welcome to MOOC's online course on Visual Perception and Art, a Survey Across the Culture. This is the 16th lecture and this class will be on Alternative Realism. Until modern art period, the history of visual art in general has been either mimetic, that is directly trying to reproduce the visual reality perceived through our eyes or it has been conceptual and to some extent fabricated based on certain pictorial notions. Interestingly, the initial phase in the history of modern art and maybe a few uh, decades even before that some of these artists and particularly from the west, they did not give up the mimetic tradition altogether. They could not really discard the purpose of reproducing the visual reality in terms of a very convincing naturalism. Yet, if you look at the paintings by very famous painters like Vincent van Gogh, or Turner, or Sura, or Manet and Monet and many others, you will see that in spite of their allegiance to representation, in spite of their deep faith in the art of representing the visual reality, they were not exactly being a part of the mimetic tradition none of them were actually trying to replicate nature and the visual experience around in terms of the actual visual reality. They were trying to propose certain alternative ways of reproducing nature and that is something that we are trying to understand under this category of alternative realism and we have already discussed that visual perception is not uniform in nature. Visual perceptions vary according to the differences in the context. We have also mentioned before that at a fundamental level, visual perception is about grasping the reality and it is also about making sense of the real. Now, this is just to recapitulate that visual perception is not uniform in nature visual perceptions vary according to the differences in the context and at a fundamental level visual perception is about grasping the reality as it is. It is about making sense of the real, the real visual experience. In modern art, however, the visual realism seems to have disappeared altogether. Particularly if you look at the later developments in modern art if you look at cubism, if you look at abstract art, it seems that visual realism is not their concern at all. And that is what we thought. But in actuality though, in modern art and particularly in the first phase of modern art, artists offered an alternative realism rather than giving up realism altogether. So we have these two artists works right now in front of us, one by John Constable and next to John Constable's painting in a similar kind of composition is the one by Vincent van Gogh and we may explain the issue by comparing between these two landscape paintings below. Now certainly both Constable and van Gogh wanted to depict the visual reality as convincingly, as tangibly as possible. None of them actually wanted to distort the visual realism. In fact, when you compare John Constable's painting with Van Gogh's, you can see that 
constable's painting at least its visual appearance is more close to the way we see things around compared to Van Gogh's paintings which also has a very strong resemblance to the visual surrounding and the visual experience yet it looks like a painting which has been dominated by the pictorial values more than the real values. I mean if you look at the Van Gogh's paintings closely you will see after a certain point if you want you may forget what is being represented whether it is a sky or a bush or a tree or a path or a grass and if you want you may focus more on the pictorial qualities like texture, brush strokes, very strong presence of colors so on and so forth. Whereas in the painting by constable all these things are there. I mean in this painting also there certainly is a lot of textures, a lot of brush works, a lot of brush strokes on the canvas yet what you finally get to see is not these textures and marks of the brush but a smoothened flattened surface with the right amount of proportion with the right amount of volume in the objects in the things depicted so that you respond more to the what is being represented in a fairly realistic and naturalistic way rather than the painting by Van Gogh where you see things more in terms of its pictorial quality. But then when you look back at a 16th century painting very realistic uh, and a very typical oil painting of a seascape or a port you can see that though there is certainly a lot of uh, pictorial efforts that has gone into the making of this painting. The purpose is after all not to create any alternative method of visual depiction but to create a painting which will enable us the viewers to respond to how the world looks like really outside without any pictorial intervention. Another example of that kind where the pictorial interventions are there but they are always made less pronounced in a painting that belongs to the genre of naturalistic painting or realistic painting tradition. But then we have this mid 19th century British painter called William Turner who was also trying desperately to depict the realism, to depict the reality outside. Yet his method was such that when you look at his paintings, for example this one, in the first glance it is not the depicted reality that you respond to but rather it is the way of his painting and this could be regarded as one of the early examples of an alternative realism in the history of modern western art. So to go back to our first contention that these artists whom we will be looking at today never wanted to get away from the purpose of realism. They never wanted to give up visual realism. They only wanted to offer some alternative methods of depicting the visual reality. And it is here at this point that our visual perceptual modes need to be adjusted. Otherwise, when you show these paintings by Turner to somebody who has never seen Turner's paintings before, he or she might find this painting completely abstract compared to one by constable like this one. So if I go back to the earlier painting Turner and again come back 
to this painting by John Constable, it becomes almost impossible to believe that they both painted at the same time and also from the same country. Yet, Constable and Turner followed two entirely different paths of depiction. In order to respond to Constable's painting like this, we really do not have to adjust our visual perception so drastically because Constable's method of depiction is quite close to our normative experience of visual perception. But when you look at a painting by Turner, we really need to adjust our visual perception. In other words, the normal visual perceptual mode is not suitable enough to respond to any painting by Turner because Turner's paintings are addressing the visual realism in a different way where the delicate details of visual realism are not given any importance at all, but Turner puts more emphasis on the violent nature of not only depiction, but the violent character of nature itself. Look at another painting by John Constable, where you can see a church at the far end of the space. So there is also this sense of space, which comes very close to our visual perception of space in our real life. Hence, we do not find this pro painting problematic at all in terms of interpreting it through the visual perception. But when you look at a painting by Van Gogh for that matter, almost a similar kind of subject matter you have a church at the far end and you have some space between the foreground and the background. Then you also have a beautiful blue colored sky in the background. But then when you look at his paintings carefully, you find it is so different in terms of the visual perception from the one that we just saw before. In this one, the space continues to be at the same register on which we are living right now. Whereas in Van Gogh's painting, the space is not very typically realistically painted, is not a typical kind of uh, painting where space, form, color, chiaroscuro, light and shade are all carried out according to the normal realistic visual perception. And this is where we say that the painters are allowing some pictorial intervention. And it is this pictorial intervention, for example, in this painting by Van Gogh, that though you understand everything that is depicted here, the raging sun in the background, some undulated land just at the background right uh, in front of the sun, then you have huge speeds running right up to the horizon. And you can also feel looking at the burrows, looking at the demarcating lines that it is a uh, cultivation field, it is a farmland. You really, you can even see the cottage at the far distance and quite a few trees in the distance as far as the recognition is concerned, as far as the problem of identifying each and every object and space is concerned, this painting is not problematic at all. Unlike the abstract paintings which we will be seeing very soon in one of our subsequent classes, where we shall see that the visual perception finds the paintings very problematic because you can't even identify any object to begin with. Van Gogh at least does not pose that kind of problem. We can actually identify each and every object over there. So where is the problem? I mean where is the issue? The issue is that our visual, normal visual perce perception uh, experience, experience of visual perception is not really familiar with this kind of visual experiences depicted by a particular painter, in this case Van Gogh. And this is where our visual perception 
constantly without our knowledge or not undergoes a process of interpreting, reinterpreting and adjusting itself to make sense of this painting which is otherwise completely identifiable. It is not an abstract painting. For example, this one by Van Gogh once again. Here also it is not difficult to identify the cloud, the small hillocks, the trees, even the vigorous brush strokes all over the canvas. Nothing is difficult for us to identify because over a period of last 100 years knowingly or unknowingly we have also learned how to adjust our visual perception in order to interpret certain kinds of paintings like this. So, at least today it is not really a problem, but if you are looking at these paintings for the first time, if somebody is looking at these paintings for the first time, she or he might find it problematic if one does not allow her or his visual perception to adjust itself. So, a certain kind of adjustment is extremely important here to make sense of what Van Gogh is doing, to make sense of what Turner is doing. For example, many of us are familiar with this painting called Starry Night by Van Gogh. But really speaking, how many of us can actually claim that we have also experienced a starry night in our own real life in the way that Van Gogh is depicting it. I mean our experiences of starry night would be naturally quite different because not that we are not imaginative, not that we do not weave certain dreams out of these experiences, but there is no such visible pictorial intervention when we watch a starry night when we experience and enjoy a starry night. But when Van Gogh paints a starry night, there is a whole amount of pictorial intervention here. As far as the logic of depiction is concerned, the basic purpose of depiction is concerned, Van Gogh is no way unfaithful. He is faithful to the core to the extent that if you look at this painting thoroughly you will see that there is not a single element, a single inch in this or centimeter in this painting which you cannot identify in terms of its identification. Yet it is an experience visually that has been developed with artistic means and it is here that our visual perception needs to expand itself, needs to cross over its immediate normative habitual experiences. Now, what we normally perceive in nature may not be the perception of the artist in the artwork. I mean artists or common people, we are all looking at the same thing, not that the artist is seeing something else than what we are looking at when we are looking at nature. But the point is when an artist is looking at nature, he or she is immediately thinking of some possible transformation and it is this potentiality that an artist carries with himself or herself to transform the visual experience into a pictorial experience. It is this potentiality that uh, becomes slightly difficult for us who do not look at nature with that potentiality. I mean when we are experiencing nature, when we are enjoying nature, we are not always thinking about making a painting out of it or writing a poetry from that experience. We are simply enjoying nature, experiencing the nature. But the moment you become a creative person and you think of a possible transformation of your experience, then the normal visual perception is not enough unless and until 
you allow it to expand itself. So, we look at the same thing implies that artists or non artists they both have similar kind of visual perception. But then when an artist comes up with a painting like this and sourced from a visual experience which we are all familiar with a full moon night and uh, with a small little hill right at the center of the painting. And you can also see a winding path it could be a winding river also and uh, trees and bushes located sporadically all over the space and the blueness of the sky is reflected by the blueness of the ground. What a beautiful painting. You know this is not exactly that uh, we all would be seeing in nature, but an artist potentially can see these things also in nature because he or she is not tied up with the normal visual perception. They are thinking in terms of a creative expression of their experience and this is where their visual perception gains in some certain dimensions. Look at this landscape by another very well known artist called Vinod Bihari Mukherjee, a very famous painting from uh, the Shantiniketan school of art. As far as the depicted reality is concerned, it is so simple, so natural and so could be very familiar also with many of us. But when this particular artist Binod Bihari, when he is painting this very familiar scene or reality using his own pictorial skills, then not only that he is shifting from his normal visual perception, but he is also creating some new visual perceptions. So, that is why right at the beginning we mentioned that not only visual perception leaves lot of impact on the artists way of or ways of thinking and doing their art, it could be the other way around. When you look at a painting by uh, any artist who depicts reality and nature in a very profound way, not just in a very photographic way, then of course, that kind of visual experience as manifest in their paintings has all the possibilities to influence our visual perception. So, visual perception is of course, is of course tied up with the social, historical and cultural context of the time, but visual perception can also change according to the our experience of of art or with art. As we experience, as our experience with art, not only doing art, but also looking at art increases, it enriches our visual perception. So, once you look at a landscape painting like this by Rabindranath Tagore, maybe and then you go out of your room and look at the nature outside, you may see that this particular vision is following you. Because after having looked at this painting for a while, your visual perception has also changed a little bit. You have learned how to look at nature from the point of view of Rabindranath Tagore or from the perspective of Van Gogh or from the point of view of Turner or anybody else. So, artists certainly leave a great impression on our visual perception. So, when you look at a painting by Isura, who was known as pointillist, because he was developing his visual reality by employing thousands of small little points or dabs of color in oil painting. And when you find that out, when you enjoy that kind of visual processing, your visual perception is bound to change in a certain way. 
In fact, in our daily life also, when you look at this photograph, you understand that the visual clarity is not same every day. It could be a sunlit morning, it could be also a foggy morning like this, when certain things automatically get out of focus and certain things are very much within your focus. So, when we talk about this alternative realism, partly of course, it is due to the huge artistic interventions that is happening in their paintings and partly it is also, it has got something to do with our visual experiences in nature, which often do not remain the same, they also change. For example, when you look at this traditional Chinese landscape painting here and uh, if you think that what you are looking at is not something that you see in nature, you are right partly because you never know when you travel to China, you might come across a mountainscape like this and which looks very much like this painting that you see here. So, Chinese landscape paintings in fact, is a very good tradition to look at and understand the complex relationship between visual perception and art that offers or that tend to offer an alternative realism. And you might also come across something like this, this is also a Chinese painting where the actual visual marks on the paper are so brief, so synoptic, so less that it almost becomes impossible at the first glance to even imagine that in this painting a whole landscape exists. But if you allow your visual perception to adjust for a while and then look at the painting, within seconds your mind will be able to see what the artist wants you to see, that is a whole landscape. Though the actual brush marks, brush strokes and the black inks, that amount is very less. It is very simplistic in a sense, it is very much spaced out, very less actually shown and a lot that is not shown. So, then it is up to our mind to fill in those gaps and turn an apparently incomplete painting into a complete one. So, no wonder uh, that uh, a painting like this by Turner, uh, I sorry by Monet uh, turned out to be uh, very much un unacceptable by the French critics in late 19th century, because the French critics of that time found that this painting by Claude Monet uh, called titled as uh, Sunrise uh, was an incomplete painting. It fails to depict reality the way it should have been. It has no details. It is just rough, basic, very sketchy brush marks and nothing else. How can one call this or consider this as a complete painting. So, that was their kind of complaint against this painting, but history was written or scripted in a different way and uh, this painting happened to be and it went down to history as one of the most influential paintings for the impressionist movements. Now, it happened, it so happened because the French critics they failed to uh, adjust their visual perception to understand that painting. And the same could happen with this painting also. This belongs to Fauvism, which um, emphasized more on color rather than a realistic depiction. And hence, when these paintings were painted, initially many critics, art critics, even many viewers found these paintings totally unacceptable because the normal visual perception was not gratified, it was not satisfied with these kind of paintings. Uh, one more painting by Claude Monet, who painted that sunrise and here you see again 
that the visual realism is definitely very close to a certain kind of realism that uh, poses no problem, but his way of painting is very peculiar. I mean, there's so much of color, so much of brushstroke, so, so much of playing with the surface that again our visual perception needs some adjustment. So alternative realism became evident in the depiction and portrayal of human beings and other figures too, like this one. Nobody would say that this self-portrait by Van Gogh is a complete deviation from reality, no. But it is an alternative way of approaching reality or for that matter this one by Edward Munch, this is also a self-portrait or this portrait by Henry Matisse. Now this uh, overpainted portrait, overpainted face is of course not a realistic way of depicting things. But certainly it has a logic which comes within the framework of visual realism, that is within the framework of visual perception or for that matter this one, distorted. However, I mean no matter it is distorted, no matter it has a whole lot of stylization, but again it is rooted in this belief of representation and hence it is not something completely out of the periphery of the normal visual perception. So, our visual perception needs to be thoroughly adjusted when you look at a drawing like this because this particular figure is not as it is painted here or drawn here, it is not a product of just mere stylization. It is also a product of a certain social reality. When people were dying in hunger, when uh, the artist found people impoverished during the Bengal famine of 1941, 42, 43 and hence the figures also assumed this terrible look. So visual perception in certain cases like this, this drawing is by the famous artist of 1940s Shumnath Hor and when you look at his drawings of these figures who in reality were in terrible situation then you know what kind of visual perception we should be employing to interpret these drawings properly or for that matter this one or this one. And of course, Rabindranath Tagore's portraits. People find them emotionally charged extremely enigmatic because of this. And similar kind of alternative realism was also proposed with still life and objects as well. So in other words, not just with landscape, alternative realism has been proposed also in different subject matters like portraits still lives and depiction of objects and the point is not just merely to challenge our normal visual perception, but within the experience of visual perception to create some alternative ways of depicting it. The real challenge will come from the next period that is cubism onwards which we are going to discuss in the next lecture. Thank you.